Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and welcome back to the fourth episode of the Chronicles of Rook. Before we get started, we have some more awesome fan art that I wanted to share with you. This one is by my Discord member, Fred1. Am I pronouncing that right? Anyways, this is actually a drawing of our boy Hot Dog after he lost his leg from the mean old holy nation. RIP Hot Dog, you had a good run. Next up, we got one from Ricky19 where Rook is geared up and about to take on a group of bandits. They better watch themselves, am I right? We also got another one from Purple Cucumber. This is a nice portrait of Rook after he got his sweet hat and goggles. Looking good, man. Looking real good. And lastly, we got one from my Discord member, Celebrimbor. Wow. Just wow. Honestly, I was blown away by how freaking awesome this one is. Huge, huge thanks to everyone that took their own time to make these really amazing drawings. If you want to show off your drawing skills, no matter your skill level, Join the Discord server and add your Kenshi fan art to the mix. I'd love to see your work. But wait, there's more. Literally, right before I was going to upload this video, my Discord user Might Might Senpai drew this amazing piece of art. It's a drawing of Rook remembering his lost friend Hot Dog. I was so blown away by this last piece that I had to edit my video last second to add it in. Dang, I love this awesome community. But what I was saying before about joining the Discord server, the link's in the description below. Anyways, back to the story. Last episode, Rook found his way into the cannibal capital by accident. Fortunately, there was a tech hunter there named Jin Sei who was an amazing fighter and cleared out the entire base, including the cannibal Grand Wizard who had a bounty of 40,000 cats on his head. Rook took this opportunity to capture the Grand Wizard and claim the bounty as his own. He even had his own version of the story to share with the Holy Nation as he collected his bounty, which made Rook seem a little more heroic. At the end of the episode, he found out that his friend Hot Dog was enslaved and killed by the Holy Nation. Enraged and saddened by the news, there wasn't much he could do about it, at least for now. He returned to the hub to heal up and prepare for his next adventure. Rook woke up from his sleep feeling rejuvenated and ready to continue on his quest to the abandoned armory. He whipped out his map and looked north of the hub. He hadn't been to World's End yet and it was on his way towards the northern coast. Rook has already detoured enough from finding out what's at the outpost on his map, but since World's End was on the way, he figured he'd make a quick stop there before heading to his true destination. He set course and was on his way. While traveling down the path, a high paladin and his group of soldiers from the Holy Nation stopped Rook and began speaking with him. Nervous, Rook played along since he was completely outnumbered. The paladin was rambling off about some Holy Nation mumbo jumbo. Blessings upon you, brother. Welcome to the Hollow Domain, homeland and asylum to all humans pure of blood. Rook thought carefully for a moment and responded in the most Holy Nation way he could think of. Blessings from the Lord of Light, brother. The paladin seemed very pleased by this response. In fact, he gave him a rations pack and sent him on his way. Rook got out of there quickly before they could smell the BS on him. It didn't take long until Rook arrived at World's End. He stopped at the entrance for a moment and took it in. Maybe he could find some nice loot here. He found a weapon shop and decided to take a look around. There it was. He's heard of the falling sun, but he's never actually seen one until now. He had to have it. This thing was expensive, but after cashing in on the Cannibal Grand Wizard, he could most certainly afford it. He traded in his plank and equipped his unwieldy new beast of a weapon. Nothing boosted Rook's morale like finding a powerful new weapon like this. It looks like detouring here was a good idea after all. There wasn't much else at World's End that interested him, so he peered over his map again and charted his way north towards the outpost. He journeyed through the valley until he was back at the Cannibal Plains. He chatted with a traveling nomad for a few minutes before he decided to check out a nearby village on his map. He was in dangerous territory now, so Rook had to tread carefully. This definitely wasn't a cannibal village. He approached the gate and the spotlights blinded him. He heard a voice calling out from the wall telling him to freeze. He was summoned to speak with this person in private. She was threatening him. Rook didn't like being in these kind of situations, so he explained he was just passing through. She didn't seem to care. He tried taking it a step further and offered some of his supplies. She still wasn't buying it. She demanded that he swears on the phoenix that he's telling the truth. Sure, that's easy enough. Fortunately, that seemed to calm her down some. She wasn't very forthcoming with additional information, though. Rook wasn't sure how he felt about these floatsome ninjas yet, but he didn't want to stick around much longer either. Okay, enough with the detours. It was time to get to that darn abandoned armory. Ooh, look at this. Rook discovered a building. Let's check it out. Rook saw the building off in the distance and decided to sneak towards it in case they were unfriendly. It was another floatsome ninja outpost. They didn't attack him before, so he figured he would try his luck here too. He saw a person named Manny taking a nap, so he decided to wake him up and find out what they were up to out here. 
So our boy Manny was a lot nicer than the other person he spoke with. He explained that they were stationed here to keep the cannibals at bay so they wouldn't spread. He was stationed there for one reason, to hunt cannibals. He warned Rook of the dangers in the valley, like he needed to be warned of that. Their conversation ended and he saw Rook off. It was time to finally head to, ooh, look, another unexplored building. Sneaking there, he realized it was just another Floatsome Ninja Scout post. There wasn't anything here, so Rook finally decided it was time to head north. It took him all evening to finally arrive at the coast. He took a moment to soak in the view of the ocean at dusk. It really was a beautiful sight. Rook continued on his way until he entered the Leviathan Coast. He very quickly realized why it had this name. This was his first time seeing these Leviathans, massive creatures that were fortunately peaceful towards humans. It really was a grand thing to see groups of them grazing the coastland and he could see the outpost just beyond them. After many, many detours, he finally arrived. He anxiously opened the door and stepped inside. Rook was immediately greeted by robotic security spiders that attacked on sight. They inflicted massive damage to Rook before he even had time to react. Already heavily wounded, he had to retreat before they killed him. All of a sudden, Rook had an idea. The mindless spiders chased him out towards one of the leviathans, but he had an unexpected visitor, a tech hunter that engaged the threat. Rook was no match for them, so he stayed back. Uh, apparently the tech hunter wasn't either. He was taken down in no time. The robots went towards the Leviathan next. This was exactly what Rook was hoping for. In the midst of the fighting, Rook was bandaging himself up. Another group of tech hunters showed up to rescue their fallen man. One of the security spiders broke from the Leviathan and went to intercept the men. Rook let the men do all the work and he decided he would help once it was almost destroyed. He followed the charge with the rest of the tech hunters towards the two remaining enemies. The Leviathan crushed the second one. It shoved Rook and the other men out of its way as it engaged the final spider. They were no match for this hulking beast. Thanks to the tech hunters and the Leviathan, the coast was clear. Rook was looking at all the chests with potential loot until he saw two more of these things. This place was very heavily guarded. The Leviathan didn't seem to like these things and it took them down with relative ease. Rook would let it take care of the rest of them. There were two of them right outside now and the spiders mindlessly engaged regardless. Rook went to help fight off the final one while it was distracted, but again, it was taken out before he even got a swing in. The coast should be clear now for Rook to explore his long-awaited, not-so-abandoned armory. He started picking the locks of the chests. The first one had a desert saber in it. Not the best weapon, but it looked quite exotic. He took it just in case. He found a rusted chain shirt, but it was actually very well made and he greedily packed it into his backpack. He checked upstairs and even though there wasn't much to look through, he did see a weapon cabinet. He went over to inspect it. Inside, there was a masterwork crossbow called a spring bat. Rook wasn't a big fan of using ranged weapons, but at the very least he could sell it for a hefty amount of cats. He loaded it into his inventory knowing he couldn't carry too much more. He didn't find anything too amazing here, but he did make it out with some extra gear that could come in handy down the road. Rook was very pleased with himself, but as he left the armory, he saw one of his tech hunter buddies getting attacked by two beak things. It was time to finally test out his falling sun. He joined in the fighting and tried to catch it off guard. The fighting continued a while longer until the Garu was critically wounded. Rook was doing a good job fending off the vicious beak thing, but the tech hunter limped his way over to Rook to back him up. Together, they brought the beast down. The other one was taken out too. Even though it was more unruly, Rook was getting used to the falling sun. Rook saw this as a good opportunity to lay down his camp bed and rest up for the journey home. He set everything up, closed his eyes, and fell into a deep sleep. He awoke that evening and began the long trip back to the hub. Fortunately, he had no issues and after a full day of travel, he arrived back to his sanctuary. He entered his small shack and began unloading his treasures into his chest. Rook went to the shop and sold the rest of the materials he salvaged along the way too. He really didn't have any other need for them. Now at this point, he accomplished his goal that he set out to do many days prior and he didn't know where to go from here. He peered over his map again and realized there were still so many unexplored cities on his map. Rook looked further east and saw a city called Morn. This would be his next destination. He began making his way there. As he left the hub, he was assaulted by a group of starving bandits. It was time to test his fighting skills again. Overall, things went pretty well in that fight, at least for Rook. He resumed his travels to his new destination. Half a day later, Rook saw a massive rusted structure off in the distance. It looked like a giant hollowed out cylinder of some old ancient technology. As he got closer, he realized that the city of Morn was built inside of these ruins. No guards were posted at the gate, so he went in and entered the bar. 
He spoke with the barman and found out that Morn used to be a mining town, but now it looked like a rundown place where people come to lay low. Then he tells Rook to stay away from the old HQ and leave the gates locked. The barman called it a pest control measure. Rook was intrigued, to say the least. He felt reasonably confident with his combat skills now, and he offered his assistance to remove this pest that was locked away. The barman was insistent in letting it be. It was apparently too much of a threat for the town. It sounded really dangerous to snoop around and investigate. So Rook immediately snuck towards the HQ's locked gate and proceeded to pick it open. The gate slowly creeped open. Clearly it's been closed off for a long time. Rook crept into the first floor and looked around. There wasn't much of anything there except for trash. Why would they have sealed this off? That's when he heard a deep growling noise from the second floor. Okay, so there was a giant great white gorilla up there. That makes more sense. Rook snuck upstairs and looked at it. It really wasn't moving much. Rook got closer to it and it looked at him. It definitely looked hostile, but it also looked like some debris from the room collapsed on top of it. The gorilla was trapped there. Rook used this opportunity to attack it. He got a swing on it before the gorilla turned on him. Rook dodged its attack and realized that the poor creature was pinned down there. He could slowly wear it down and avoid its attacks. He'd have to be careful and patient, but he could definitely take this thing out without getting harmed. Surely the people of Morn didn't realize it was stuck like this. If he killed this giant beast, they would think it was in straight combat. That would definitely be a story to share. This went on until late into the night. The gorilla was severely wounded and very tired. At this point, Rook was able to land multiple blows before it would even react. A couple more hits and it was finished. Rook collected the Great White Gorilla skin off of it. It would sell for a good price. He wanted to show off his kill to the townsfolk. These are the kind of things you do to make a name for yourself after all. It was big, but Rook was able to hoist its corpse over his shoulder and take it with him. He hauled it outside of the abandoned HQ where people could see it. Rook smiled as he heard people gasp at what they saw. He took it into the bar and spoke with the barman again. Rook shared his story of how he fought the gorilla in a glorious battle, but his fighting skills greatly outmatched the gorilla. Everyone cheered as the barman gave drinks on the house for Rook's achievement. He took its corpse outside and laid it on the ground. Hey, what happened? He looked it over and checked out the rest of Morn. There wasn't really anything else here, so he left towards the nearby city, Cantoon. He stopped at the front gate and saw there was another. This place had good defenses. He stopped at the second gate and greeted the guards. He looked over the city and briefly checked it out. There wasn't anything of interest for Rook here, so he looked at his map for the next closest city, Brink. He set this as his next destination and took off. See, this is what Rook was looking for, traveling the world and finding adventures. He entered a region called Venge. This area is a bit more bleak than what he was used to seeing. All of a sudden, he sees a massive beam of light fall from the sky. He realized that was directly where he needed to go to. Well, Rook enjoyed a little bit of danger in his travels. He took a deep breath and pressed forward. Multiple more beams of light were falling from the sky around Rook. Maybe this wasn't a good idea after all. Regardless of it being a good idea or not, he was already in the thick of it and he had to be careful not to get hit by one of these death rays. Fortunately, he made it through unscathed, and he continued traveling until that night where he could see Brink off in the distance. It was quite a beautiful view with the night sky above him and the city on the horizon. He made his way into the city and looked it over briefly. To Rook, it was just another boring city with no adventures to be found. He reviewed his map again and saw the city of Black Scratch nearby. That was his next destination. The city was built around a massive old-looking structure. He was curious to see what was there. Rook came to the entrance and stopped to take it all in. He found a travel shop and decided to take a browse at their inventory. He found a high quality dust coat that offered good protection and it didn't hinder his stealthiness. Rook really wanted this, so he purchased the coat and put it on. Good protection, and he thought it looked pretty cool too. It was a good purchase. Other than the dust coat, he didn't find anything else of interest here. He saw there was a small village nearby. He wanted to check it out while traveling north to the other cities on his map. He made his way out of the city towards his next destination. Rook arrived at the village and ran through the gate. He looked it over and saw that it was a small, quaint village. It didn't really have anything to offer for Rook. He started to plot his way to the next city, but there was a place that caught his eye. It was a market and it wasn't too far away. 
He wanted to take a look and see what was there, so he left the village. He could see the market in the distance surrounded by arid land. He went through the gate and realized that this wasn't an ordinary marketplace. It was a slave market. If you didn't already realize this, Rook did not like slavers at all. Knowing that slavers captured his friend Hot Dog and caused his ultimate demise through the Holy Nation only fueled his disdain for them even more. The slaver boss bragged about how Rook could purchase one to do all of his hard labor and he would never have to break a sweat. Rook kept his composure, but was very annoyed. In fact, it made him change his plans and do something rash. But this is where we'll leave off on this episode. What will Rook do next? Stay tuned for the next episode to find out. I also want to thank my newest patron, Drew Scarborough, for supporting me through Patreon. I really appreciate your help. And a huge thanks to all my patrons that are supporting the channel to one day make this a full-time gig. I'm extremely grateful for your help. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.